Hi, this is Graham Brown from Upschool. You're listening to Upschool Book Reviews. Today, I'm going to review The $100 Startup by Chris Guillebeau. Now, this book promises to reinvent the way you make a living, do what you love, and create a new future. That's a bold claim. So, does it deliver? Well, I put this book in my free five-book course, the book review course. If you go to upschoolbookreviews.com slash course, you can get access to a free course which has the top five books, top five business books for entrepreneurs. And I review each one of those books and deliver you the key points from those books so you don't have to read them. Well, if you have read them, you can get more out of them by reviewing those key points with me. So go and check that out, upschoolbookreviews.com slash course. So let's have a look at the $100 Startup by Chris Guillebeau, which is on that list. It's one of the five books. Why? Well, a bit of background. Chris Guillebeau, he originally started out writing a blog called The Art of Nonconformity, where he traveled the world and talked about his lifestyle. And he... I think he claims to, he, he validated that claim. He went to every single country in the world, toured around. And as a result of that, he met a lot of people on his travels as he was blogging. You know, he built an audience. He built a a fan base. And meeting these people, he learned a lot about the kind of business models that were emerging, which I want to talk about. And these are what I call the lifestyle entrepreneurs. So I believe that The $100 Startup really is a book written about lifestyle entrepreneurs. It really doesn't go into the depth and detail about how to become a lifestyle entrepreneur. It really just gives you case study examples of what's possible, whether that be a dog walking service or somebody that's running an online app development outfit. So what Chris Guillebeau does is really talk about the kind of options there are. And it doesn't really go deep, as I said. It doesn't go into the technicalities. It doesn't give you a step-by-step. For something like that, I would suggest a book more on the tactical side, which would be The Seven Day Startup by Dan Norris, which I'll talk about in one of my book reviews. So what does Chris Guillebeau talk about? Well, it's really given away in the first section, which is entitled The Unexpected Entrepreneurs. And what Chris Guillebeau does in this book is relay the stories, share the stories of these unexpected entrepreneurs. And what I mean by that, what he means by that is people who have become entrepreneurs as a result of being pulled into that discipline, as opposed to people who set out to become entrepreneurs in more or less the way which is the dominant narrative of the time, which is the startup entrepreneur, there's somebody who goes and, you know, goes to Stanford University, does computer science, graduates, goes into an accelerator, comes up with an idea, raises $5 million for some app which doesn't even have any users yet. That kind of scene, which is the dominant narrative in what entrepreneurs are today, whereas what Chris Guillebeau offers as an alternative is these unexpected entrepreneurs. So these are the lifestyle entrepreneurs. These are the people who are doing stuff because they're really passionate about it and they're building lifestyle businesses. Now, it's important to talk about lifestyle businesses in the context of what Chris Guillebeau defines as a lifestyle business, and that is people making good money doing what they love. Up until now, lifestyle businesses have tended to have been a bit of a secondary choice in the options available to somebody who's entrepreneurial. It's always seen as a bit of a a cop-out. You know, become a lifestyle entrepreneur because you don't want to work hard enough or you're not ambitious enough. But the truth is today, and you look at a lot of the location-independent entrepreneurial community, and a lot are based out here in Asia, as there are as many in Europe or North America or South America. There's a big location-independent entrepreneurial community People who are lifestyle entrepreneurs who are making a very good money doing what they love because they're running super lean businesses. They're running businesses without offices. They don't have complements of staffs. So they're running virtual outsourced operations. And that's something I'll talk about in a future book review. Recommended book, Virtual Freedom by Chris Ducker. That's coming up. So 
what these lifestyle entrepreneurs are doing is focusing on this core promise, which is what this book, $100 Startup, is about. And it's about value. What is value? Because Chris Guillebeau defines value as closely associated with freedom. So let's wind this back a bit. If your goal is to create a lifestyle where freedom is at the top of that pyramid, then it's really important that you focus on value. What is value? So let's look at what value is, because this is a core concept in the book $100 Startup by Chris Guillebeau, value. And Chris Guillebeau defines this almost inadvertently in his writing. And I picked this out of his writing. He says, focus on usefulness, not innovation. What do I mean by that? Well, the traditional startup narrative for entrepreneurs is about innovation. Find the next big app. If you go to meet up events, people will come up to you and approach you and talk about their game-changing app. There's a lot of ego. Everybody wants to be the next Mark Zuckerberg, the next Elon Musk. They want to change the world. What a $100 startup does is give us another option. You don't have to change the world to be successful. You can be successful and make a lot of money simply solving a problem that somebody like you has on an everyday basis. That is usefulness. Usefulness equals value. So let me repeat that core concept again. Focus on usefulness, not innovation. Usefulness equals value. And the more value you can create, the more freedom you can have as an entrepreneur. Let's put that together. What is usefulness? Solving a problem that people like you have on an everyday basis. So in my context, I'm an endurance sport athlete. I love Ironman triathlon. One of the problems we Ironman triathletes have is injury because we train a lot. And we're not just training one sport, we're training three sports, swim, bike, run, and quite long distances. So the Ironman is 4,000 meter swim, 180K bike, and then a marathon. So to train yourself for those kind of distances when you're not a professional athlete is tough. You face injury. So how can you deal with that? That's a problem that people like me have on an everyday basis. And that creates pain, it creates frustration, not just physical pain, but real emotional pain, because if you get injured, then that can wipe out a season, and a season, a year of training, just wiped out all your goals taken away from you. And for people who are ambitious and goal-focused like me, that can be really tough. And I've seen people injured, and luckily, touch wood, I haven't been injured yet, but I've seen people who faced horrific injuries, some falling off bikes, some through their own, you know, over-exercise. So let's say you created an app. It doesn't have to be an app, but I'm just picking an app, top of my head. Let's say you created an app for Iron Man injury. So that app solves a problem that people like you have on an everyday basis. And it has to be people like you. There's no point you creating an Iron Man app if you're not an Iron Man, because you don't understand the emotional drivers, the frustrations, the pains, all those kind of feelings that Iron Man triathletes have. Now, if you're a surfer, create a surfer app. If you're into pets, create a pet app. Don't mix those up. Because it won't work. Because your success is based on your ability to solve that problem. And to solve that problem, you really have to feel what your customer or user is going to feel. That's called empathy. It's no, gro it's no good creating a great app if you don't really empathize with the people who are going to use that. So start with your own ecosystem. Build a solution to the problem that they're having on an everyday basis. Don't necessarily go out and create an opportunity for them. The biggest business market for you is simply solving a problem. So let's say you created this Ironman injury recovery app or injury prevention app. Maybe you have to dial in some numbers and 
the app tells you when to back off a little bit, when to train harder and so on. You can put in your heart rates, you can put in your readings and so on. And it gives you some advice. You're overtraining, you're undertraining and so on. So that's a simple problem solved by people like you for people like you. Simple. You're not changing the world. But that alone is enough to create a hugely profitable business. Now, let's bring this forward. That is being useful rather than innovative. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to invent heart rate monitors or quantified self-type reading apps. They're all there already. All you have to do is put these things together and out execute whatever's in the market. So let's bring this together. That's usefulness. Usefulness equals value. So you're creating value for a user. And if you really understand the user emotionally, you can create more value. You understand what their pain points are. You can understand what their frustrations are. So now let's put this together with the idea of freedom. And this is what the $100 startup is all about. A freedom-based business. A business where freedom is at the top of your pyramid. How can you create freedom from that kind of product? Well, it goes back to this. The more value you can create, the more freedom you can have. How does that work? Well, if you can solve that problem for that person in a way that they want, and it really deals with their pain points and frustrations, does it matter that it's just little old you developing that app in your back room? Does it matter that you don't have a 24-hour answering service for your company? Does it matter that you don't have an office registered address in Bond Street or London or Rodeo Drive in Los Angeles or Hong Kong? It doesn't matter. None of that matters because you're solving the problem. So that's how value and freedom are closely associated. The more value you can create, the more freedom you can have. Now, if you can really create value, customers don't care. They don't care that it's just you. And they don't care you're not available 24-7 because it's you solving a problem for them. So if you think about it, all those things that tie us back in business, that take freedom away from us, like, for example, operating a big team, having an office, having to deal with clients locally on a geographical basis, all these things that restrict our freedoms that make us busy like the things that we kind of get sucked into like social media updating it doesn't matter that you haven't updated your facebook page in a week that people aren't going to think any less of you because at the end of the day if you can solve that problem and create value you can forget about all those things you can put them on the backbone and just focus on the value creation and that gives you real freedom. You can run that business from Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam or Las Palmas in the Canarias. You can do that in your beach sandals, on the beach, at the hours, times that you want to work. And that is what freedom is about. That's what a lifestyle entrepreneur is about, putting lifestyle at the top of the pyramid. And to do that, you need free... You, let me start again. To do that, you need to create value. And to create value, you need to focus on usefulness and not innovation. And to create usefulness, you need to solve a problem that people like you have on an everyday basis. That is what being a lifestyle entrepreneur is all about. That is The $100 Startup, everybody, by Chris Gillibo. Now, as I said, this book is more or less a collection of case studies, which are useful in their own right, because it gives you an idea of what's possible and what's not. And we learn as human beings through story more than anything else. So each one of these case studies is a story. However, it doesn't contain those implementable steps. And that's what will be coming up in a future book review when I talk about the seven day startup from Darren Norris. My name is Graham Brown. This is Upschool Book Reviews. If you enjoyed these book reviews, then please go and check out my course, which is a free course of five book reviews. Go and check it out, upschoolbookreviews.com slash course.